In this video, we want to consider some of the special properties of uh, symmetric matrices. Uh, before we do, a uh, reminder, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, here we have a vector, or actually not a vector, a matrix A with rows 163, 649, 395, and we want to take the transpose of it. So this column is now a row, this column is a row, and this column is a row. And we do that transposition, we see we have the exact same vector. So vectors that have that property, when you take their transpose and you get the same vector, or they get the same matrix, then those are called symmetric matrices. Also, remember um, when you multiply matrices and take the transpose, for example, suppose we have multiply these two together to get a product, then take the transpose of that product, that is equal to the transpose of B times the transpose of A. We'll use this um, this fact a little bit in our video. Because we want to show in this video is that if you have matrices that are symmetric and they have real numbers in them, then their eigenvalues are always real. Now I think it was in videos 18 and 19 we had example where we had complex eigenvalues and indeed that can happen in fact it's almost guaranteed to happen with most uh, matrices and when it does the eigenvalues that are complex occur together as complex conjugates and their corresponding eigenvectors are also complex conjugates Again, we discussed that and we demonstrated that in videos 18 and 19. But here in this video, then, we want to have, we want to consider a, spe a special t class of matrices that are symmetric. So matrix A equals its transpose, and we also said that the entries of A are real, so the complex conjugate of matrix A is just matrix A. Okay, so we have a general eigenvalue eigenvector equation. I'm not going to put the bars on top of the x's, but these are vectors here. And as we said now, when you're going to find the eigenvalues of a matrix, the eigenvalues can be complex. Uh, they'll occur as complex conjugates, and their corresponding eigenvectors will also occur as complex conjugates, as we demonstrated in the earlier videos. Now, for this equation, um, here we have an A times a column vector. We're going to multiply both sides by the transpose of this vector. So in other words, we're going to multiply by a row vector. And as you saw in videos 7a and 7b, when you multiply a matrix by a row vector, you do it on the left. So we'll have x transpose ax equals lambda x transpose x. And when we take the transpose of x, remember I was dealing with the most general case where you can have complex eigenvalues and complex eigenvectors. Not only do we take its transpose, but we take the complex conjugate as well. So this is just simply a row vector. Here we had a vector, an eigenvector. We're assuming it's complex. It's a column vector. Write it as a row vector and take its complex conjugate and multiply both sides of the equation by that. And again, when you multiply a matrix by a row vector, you always do it on the left. When you multiply it by a column vector, of course, you always do it on the right. So we have this equation here. Now let's go back to this one. We have A x equals lambda x. 
and let's take the complex conjugate of both sides. So that will be the complex conjugate of matrix A. That has all real entries, so that's just going to be A times the complex value or the complex conjugate of eigenvector x equals the complex conjugate of this times the complex conjugate of the eigenvector. So we have this equation. Now for this equation, let's take the transpose of both sides. So we're going to have this. Take the transpose, and here, take the transpose. And remember now, when you're multiplying, taking your product, and you want the transpose of that product, it's each one individually in reverse order. So for here, this will be complex conjugate x transpose. Complex conjugate of x transpose times, reverse the order, a transpose will equal, now on this side we don't have to reverse the order because this is just a number. This is not a, a column vector or a row vector or a matrix. It's just some number, a complex number, but it's just a number. So here then we can just have lambda complex conjugate transpose like this. Now let's multiply both sides of this equation by x. We'll write it down here. So we have this complex conjugate transpose. Oh, well, what's a transpose? That's just a. We're dealing with the symmetric matrix. So we can just write this as a times x equals transpose times x. So we have this equation. Now let's go back to the top to what we did originally. Right up here where we had an eigenvalue eigenvector equation and we just multiplied both sides by the complex conjugate of this. It's transpose complex conjugate. We got this equation. Here we took a little different approach, but we, what we have here on the left hand side here is exactly what we have on the left hand side here. So we have then that this must equal this. So let's write this out. We have lambda from up here times try to, try to keep everything in view at once. Okay, lambda x complex conjugate transpose times x. That's right here. And that equals this. We have this equation. And again, that is because we have this expression here on the left hand side, which is the same as this expression. And this equals this. Down here, we have this. So this and this must be equal. 
as we have written right here. Well, here we have this equation. This and this are the same. So if these are going to be equal, then this, these must be equal. Well, the only way something can equal this complex conjugate is if it's a real number. So that's our proof that when we have a matrix equal to its transpose, all of its eigenvalues are real eigenvalues. There's no complex eigenvalues involved. And where we use the fact that A is a symmetric matrix was right here. We had A transpose here. But then we wrote it down here, we wrote it as A because A and A transpose are the same since it's a symmetric matrix. Then when we did that, then we had this expression here identical to what we had up here, which enabled us then to equate this with this, as he wrote out in this equation right here. So really it was at this step here, though, where we use the fact that A is a symmetric matrix, and then that leads us to the conclusion that the eigenvalues must be real. Okay, there's another nice property that symmetric matrices have. Um, in our previous video, we proved that when you have distinct eigenvalues, and so forth, their corresponding eigenvectors are linearly independent. Well, for symmetric matrices, we're going to prove this in the next video, the corresponding eigenvectors, not only are they linearly independent, but they're also orthogonal. And that we will prove in the next video. Again, another special property, though, of symmetric matrices.